Hello, and welcome to Edison TV. My name is Aaron Atkar. I'm an analyst here at Edison within the healthcare and investment trust teams. Today, we're looking at BB Biotech, a Switzerland-based investment company targeting long-term capital growth from biotechnology companies that develop and market innovative drugs. We are joined by Dr. Christian Koch, who is currently a deputy head of the investment management team, but will assume the role of head of the investment management team on the 1st of January, 2025. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. So to kick off, there is a strong sense within the biotech sector at the moment that the investment environment is improving. In your view, what are the key factors lifting this sentiment? Well, for one, it's uh, the prospects, I think, of lower interest rates over the mid to long term, uh, which means for many of these biotech companies, lower capital costs. It is re very relevant because of the high capital requirements that they have and the long duration. Um, of the drug development process. The second part that we're seeing improve slowly is on the financing side. The IPO market has woken up again. Um, there are secondaries after good data sets. So that's a very important part of the industry. Aside from that, it's for sure the fundamental prospects of good clinical data. We've seen a couple of very important and big updates. Um, for example, the big trial of Namal Nalan in TTR cardiomyopathy and then regulatory approvals. And those regulatory approvals are actually on a very high level if you look at it historically. And then last, um, the part that's very important as well for the industry, for the biotech industry is M&A. Um, there was a very um, high number of M&A last year. This year it's been a little bit mute. Um, we think this could start picking up after the US election. Great. So aside from those generally supportive fundamental factors just mentioned, there's some major milestones on the horizon for BB Biotech's portfolio holdings. Can you outline the potential ramification of these for the portfolio? Yeah, we have more or less big milestones for almost all of our core holdings and some of the smaller ones over the next 12 months. I think the ones that I can point out a little bit to is, for example, for Ionis, one of our largest holdings. And uh, they alone have three major clinical late stage readouts. Uh, over the next 12 months and um, at least two product launches. Um, so we're very hopeful to see good clinical data there and anticipate that they will execute well on the product launches. Um, another one I can point out is one of our, or the only private uh, investment we have, um, Ruvis Pharmaceuticals and Obesity. What I can disclose there is that uh, they have a late-breaking abstract and presentation at the uh, heart failure uh, Association Congress in the U.S. Uh, end of this month. Um, and we hope that will show a good path forward uh, for that company. Um, and the third one would be, for example, our large oncology holding revolution medicines that will show first larger, a first larger data set on lung cancer, um, where they have shown pancreatic, promising data on pancreatic cancer before that, and it's the same asset. We see that BB Biotech's search for new investment opportunities is supported by the work of an in-house team of data scientists. Firstly, could you help us understand how this team uses AI and big data techniques? Yeah, um, in its essence, it's supposed to impact every part of um, the investment process or specifically the, an investment case um, that can be on various levels. And at a later time when we hold, hope it also impacts us on, on an aggregated level over the whole portfolio, understanding our fundamental data of every investment case at scale. Um, there's many different ways that it can be impacted. One is through efficiency, for example. Um, the highest impact it can have is in generating novel insights. Uh, for example, um, we buy real world evidence data in the form of insurance claims, so very large data sets. And there we can now understand in the actual market um, patient journeys in a new way. We can finally ask different or other other questions that we couldn't even answer before. Also, um, reduce the fuzziness and a lot of parameters in our models, for example, about incidence and prevalence of certain rare diseases or more common diseases. We get a better picture of how the actual treatment landscape is at the moment versus prior people were always taking literature and taking very small sample sets there. So I think it can impact us really on every level and it's growing in contribution on many 
to the mosaic of an investment case on many levels there. Fantastic. So finally, following on from that, could you maybe share a bit more color on how this work on AI and big data techniques enhances BB Biotech's investment process and decision making? Well, the same way it's impacting the uh, on the investment process level and an individual investment case, we also annotate and collect um, what decisions we took at uh, which point um, through the data science network. That's one annotation framework. And then we can apply machine learning or easier tech or also simpler techniques um, to correlate decision making processes with findings and learnings uh, that again can happen on an individual case level uh, and future prospects of investment candidates, how we can apply specific learning sets in a certain therapeutic area or with a certain technology. Um, but that can also be helpful um, for portfolio construction, construction and uh, balancing. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Chris. We appreciate your time and look forward to following your progress in years to come. If our audience would like to learn more about BB Biotech, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thanks again, Chris. Thank you very much, Aaron.